on that in a minute. But first, the strange but true story of the dream detective. Christopher Robinson foretells the future in his dreams. He accurately predicted the Twin Towers atrocity in New York on September the 11th, the murder of Jill Dando, and many, many more incidents. Like the horrific air show accident he dreamt about in July 1993. Days later, this terrible plane crash took place at Fairford Airfield, where two planes collided head-on at 300 miles per hour. Well, mercifully, no one was hurt. Christopher is here now. Christopher, hello. Hello. Um, I know that we're going to uh, be crossing over to, well, we're going to be taking a live phone call from uh, Arizona where you've been taking part in some extraordinary scientific tests over there yes. to prove the um, as quite astonishing accuracy of what you're dreaming. But when did, when did this, uh, we've, I know we've, we've met you before. This start didn't start at all until you were, what, in your 30s? Uh, yeah, I was about 35 when it started. And you've no idea why? No, we don't have any idea why. And I mean, we speculate on all sorts of things, but no real idea. What was your first precognitive the dream? The first one was Chernobyl. Mm. And then there was Lockerbie. And then it moved into um, 1989 when I was dreaming about IRA bombs and things going off all over the place. Mm. So from, 80, from September 89, it was like every day. And these dreams take different forms. Sometimes you're at, at the site of, of whatever's going to happen. Yes. Uh, sometimes you're observing it. Yes, yeah, sometimes yeah. you're observing it. Sometimes you're taking the role of the people as well. So, um, I mean, in the early days, I would dream that somebody was going to be murdered, and in the dream, I was the one being killed. Mm -hmm. And that's quite frightening. Mm. And, 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 and very quickly I realised when you see on the news the next day or the day after that mm. this has now happened and it wasn't you, you can get relaxed about that. Yeah. When yeah. you were at the University of Arizona, we'll be talking to the professor who, who supervised the tests on you there. It was a 10-day programme, wasn't it? Was yes. It, was it there that you had the dream in, in August uh, about the Twin Towers? Yes. On, um, I was there for a month mm. and there were 10 days of experiments during the month. Yeah. And on August the 11th, um, I got up in the morning and we went to like a little debriefing and you video everything that you do and yeah. write it all down before you do the experiment. And I said, I, I don't even want to talk about what I dreamt last night. And he said, well, well, what was it? And I said, I was in New York and terrorists crashed planes into those Twin Towers. Jeez. Uh, but it was just like, uh, just like yeah. being there. And that, was a no, matter, and, that, and that is a matter of record at the University of Arizona. Yeah, there, uh, yeah, there are lots of people there that, we dis that, that know yeah. about this. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the thing is, what you've started doing now, you've, been work you've worked with the police um, over here and, on several levels. I started with the police very, very early on because you can't see stuff like this without them being interested in you, never mind you're interested in them. Right, so, so you started with the police, but now, in fact, you're because, because of the astonishing accuracy of your dreams, you're now in touch with intelligence services. Yeah, it's, and it, yeah it moved up from the police. I haven't had much to do with the police since 96. Mm -hmm. It moved up to somebody and another department. Mm -hmm. And now I've got another department, not only here, but... Um, through the university and a department in Washington. So you have a hotline, basically, and you know that these people will believe you. It's not a case of you knocking on a, on a no, police station door no. and saying, you have to listen to me. I'm I not mean... allowed to tell you who I've met, but if no. I was, you'd be amazed. Well, in that case, why couldn't uh, anything be done about the September the 11th? Well, from our point of view at the university, it was just one dream that we didn't want to talk about. Mm. No. And we didn't... Because of panic. Because uh, of, yeah. yeah, because of all sorts of things. But you, so did, we, inform the, you did inform the authorities? Um, th there was somebody who is connected to the authorities that was overseeing partly the experiment. But, one has but to I say, don't know much about that. The professor no. would need to tell One has you. to say there, there were many pieces of uh, evidence well, there material were, uh, yeah. pointing to the Twin Towers happening yeah. that were never acted they on. They actually that, arrested no. a man in Manila with the details of it in his pocket and didn't yeah. do anything. Yeah. I no, believe you also had a dream yeah. about this latest um, uh, dirty bomb arrest in uh, in America? Well, that's why I was... One of the reasons I went to Washington was to try and focus on Washington, because I'd seen Washington this is after, as a this target. Is, this is after you after, were in Arizona? Yes. This is you, February. They brought you over to... Uh, I went over to Washington, right, go on. and I met with um, a lady there who works with an <coughs> intelligence agency. Yeah. yeah. And we had sort of, I suppose... Uh, well, we had two weeks together, mm. Mm. and I was seeing this incident that was going to, we thought was going to take place in Washington. Mm -hmm. So we did as much as we could to work on that. And then I came back and I went back to Washington to, to, to meet some people, again, mm -hmm. that are connected through the university. Yeah. And, and we, we did some more work on it. And thank goodness they've arrested people. And you were telling me earlier that although the actual arrest at O'Hare Airport, I think eight, nine years ago... Wouldn't connect to me whatsoever. Not directly, but you think there was an arrest but it might, that Yes, arrest, it yeah. might connect to something earlier. Well, I mean, you know, when you, when you actually listen um, to Christopher, you could be forgiven, I suppose, for thinking that he was in some way deluded um, or a mm. fantasist. Um, 
But so impressed were scientists at the University of Arizona after Christopher's numerous predictions came true that they performed a blind experiment on him over 10 days. And on the line from Arizona now is Professor Gary Schwartz, who conducted the study. Good morning, I mean, good evening, Professor Schwartz. Good evening to you. Hello. Um, can you tell us um, how, how he did, in other words, in these tests? How impressed were you by him? To tell you the truth, I was, uh, as a technical term, I was, quote, blown away by the accuracy. I was completely surprised. Um, this experiment involved Christopher going to sleep each night and then dreaming about where he would be taken the next day. And he would record his dreams. All of this was recorded on digital videotape. Yep. And then the information, which was held in secret envelopes that were randomly um, uh, sorted, and mm. were kept in California. An envelope would be opened in California, and I would be told for the first time where we were going. Right. So, at the time that this information was being received, of course, it, you know, I, the truth was I, I had no idea where we were going to go on any given day. Mm. The same was with Christopher. And day after day, he received highly specific information that, that, uh, that was related to the process of going to the site, information at the site, mm. and then continued information for the rest of the day, even though the experiment was, so to speak, officially completed. So in other words, he had lucid, logical, cogent dreams that the night before he was taken to a secret location of those locations. He saw an advance where he couldn't possibly have known consciously where he was going to be taken. That's correct. Now, also, you should understand that if he had gotten, for example, even five out of ten correct, mm. Um, it would have been extraordinary, mm. and that, and he he was expecting that if he did well, that's what would happen. Uh, it just so happened that he was quote in the zone, you might say. He was very motivated, as was I, to push mm. his talent to the extreme. Pro and professor, that he was actually accurate ten out of ten. Ten, ten out, of out of ten. Professor, what the heck is going on? Well, of course, the answer, the truth is that nobody knows. However. It has been long known, actually throughout recorded history, that certain individuals have what are called precognitive dreams, that is, they can, quote, see the future. And the question has been, are they, quote, if you would, reading the minds of people who are perpetrating, uh, potentially perpetrating a crime, are they, quote, tapping into, you know, information in the universe about past, present, and future yeah. in some mm -hmm. sort of way, or are they actually receiving intelligent assistance from people who have died, as well as more highly intelligent sources yes. that would provide this information. And by the way, at, at this point, all the hypotheses are, are, are plausible. Because yes. we haven't got an answer. But of course, the question of, of whether you're receiving messages from either those who've passed on, um, or those who are visualizing what they plan to do, such as planting a bomb, yes. that's kind of blown away by, by the dreams that you have about accidental events, yes, like absolutely. two aircraft colliding. Abs absolutely. That's right. And all... Yeah. <laughs> Very quickly, Professor, one last point from me, please. Go ahead. Yes, carry on. One last point from you, Professor, if you want to make your concluding point, please. Yes. Well, one thing I would like to say is that just like I, I consider Christopher to be a, quote, Michael Jordan of the, of the dream intelligence world, <laughs> but remember, Michael Jordan, on the average, was only about 45% in his baskets. Yeah. yeah. A good game, he gets 60%, and a bad game, he gets 20%. And so you're never going to judge even a superstar athlete on how they do in any single test. Okay. Okay. And thank so, therefore, when you know when you do an experiment with him, whether or not it quote works, is not itself a scientific test. Right. It's just an evaluation, you know, a demonstration. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very that. much. Um, that that is extraordinary. We're going to do something similar to that with yes. you ourselves tonight. Yesterday, we asked you if you would uh, make yourself dream. I don't know how yes. you do this, but if you if you could make yourself dream of a specific secret location. Um, to which we will take you today. Yes, that's right. Yes. And did you do that? I did. And Whether it's right, we have to see. Well, well 10 well, out of 10 ain't bad so far. No, <laughs> I know. Now, you, have, you've, you wrote down what you I've written the fundamentals dreamed. of the dreams on some cards which are in here. Right, if you and, give those and, to and us. My, the original dream notes are back in, in my folder. All right, well, you've, right. Written, you've written down the essential information of yes. what you saw in the dream. The fundamental the... key, key yeah. words, The key like. words, the key images, yes. OK. Yes. Have you done a drawing um, as well? Uh, yes, there are two drawings in there, if I remember. Well, let's just sign the back of this envelope along the seal. Um, so, because we have no idea what's in this envelope, we haven't opened it, and oh. there you are, it's 
completely and utterly sealed up now. Could you now put your blindfold on, yes. please? Thank you. Polly, would you come forward? Polly, uh, who's one of our researchers on the programme, is going to uh, take you to the secret location. Yes. Um, which isn't too far from here, but of course it could be one of hundreds. Here we are in South London, just south of the capital centre, and uh, he can't hear anymore. Good. And Polly, you're going to you're going to take him there. We've got a car standing by. Mm -hmm. It could be one of any lotions in central London, correct? Okay, okay Polly, Polly, if you'd like to take him out and take I him by the arm. I think he's going to need a bit of here. assistance because he can't see. All right. Okay, well then, Paul. Okay. And we will be going live to that secret location, which only one or two people on this programme know. Um, uh, not us. Not us, uh, towards the end of the programme. But ten out of ten, he ought to have, he ought to have got it right. Okay, absolutely no predictions on who will be playing You Say We Pay Later.